Hey guys, what's up? Bisector Tron here from One Hive Gazette here with the next war recap video, and this is the one against uh, Blood, very good clan, and uh, they put up a very close war. Uh, just go through the bases real quick, and uh, you can see they uh, two start our top, or two start all our Town Hall Elevens, and then uh, got our nine point fives. We had quite a few nine point fives, I think. And a few of the bottom tens, uh, I'm not sure what Garski is, but uh, three, two star of the top tens got the bottom uh, ish ones. But they left a number of nines uh, two starred. So that might have been the, the main thing that, that did them in. Because uh, you can see over here, I think we just had one more Town Hall 10 three starred in them uh, from what I'm seeing right here. Uh, all the 11s two starred as usual. And then we got all the nines cleaned up. So. Uh, good job to our Town Hall 9s with the bases. Uh, they definitely were tricky to 3-star, and uh, that made the difference for the most part in this war. So let's take a look at a few of the attacks. Um, and we're going to start with just one Town Hall 10 taking on a Town Hall 11 for a 2-star. Um, besides this, don't really have any high-level action uh, because there weren't uh, any... All the Town Hall 10 3-stars, I think, were our Town Hall 11s dipping down, which I'm not too inclined to show, so... Uh, not in this video at least. We're going to look at some uh, bottom Town Hall 9 action, which I think is something we don't see quite as much. Um, but anyway, uh, we're looking at Garski, and he's coming in here with somewhat low-level heroes, 30-37, which is pretty low uh, for a Town Hall 10 at least, uh, at least in the One Hive clans. And uh, you can see here, he went, went ahead and tried to lure out the CC, probably was expecting like a Golem and a Balloon. Uh, which is the kind of the standard anti-Valk composition in there, but uh, instead only a few troops came out, so he didn't get the full lure. Anyway, though, drops in a few balloons and gets a great trade right here. I think just three balloons. Got that archer tower and gets almost uh, the cannon. You can see it still has a little bit of hit points left here. Uh, drops down the queen, lets her just start working, and I think he wanted her to go south here. Because uh, you can see for some reason she goes back up north and uh, luckily the healers don't quite go in range of the air defense. They get pretty close but not quite. Drops down that rage and uh, that's what people have been doing. I think it's somewhat effective dropping down the rage a little earlier so that way the queen gets the full benefit of the damage and when the time comes the healers will eventually fly into it. The only problem was that was too far out ahead and had to pop the ability because the healers hadn't yet reached the uh, rage when the queen was almost about to go down. So had to adjust that placement a little bit. But anyway, the eagle's activated, it's on the queen, she's gonna go down, uh, but she's done a pretty good job, gotten some good percentage. And from here, just opens up the base, drops in the Valks, the jump, um, and then just lets them make their way through the base with that rage, get through pretty quickly, good freeze there, nice and early on that eagle. And uh, all those giant bombs in the core really do some damage to those Valks, uh, just the combination of all of them going off. So the Valks do go down pretty quickly, but at least they got the Town Hall. Uh, not a whole lot after that, but still got the 50, uh, high 50% because uh, he had the Queen getting so much value, even though I think she went the wrong way. But anyway, go ahead and fast forward because this one's pretty much over. 54%, uh, pretty solid job. Uh, nice attack to Garski. Okay. Uh, from here, we are going to go to, uh, if I can remember it, I think it's 21. Um, I hope I don't forget this. Yeah, okay, cool. 21 is the base. Um, and this one I thought was interesting because you can see it's a dead zone base, but he is bringing the Valks, Civil Serpent, and uh, also a Queen Walk. So kind of interesting. A little bit of a variation, and uh, this is not going to be an all Valk uh, recap. I think I have two attacks that um, are a little bit different, so... Uh, something different for you guys. I, one of the series for the voting actually is something uh, with some unique attacks, and I think that's uh, something that would be cool to do. The votes are still coming in, so make sure you vote if you haven't already, because it's actually very close between all three of the series. Uh, so go ahead and uh, take the time to vote if you haven't yet, and the results will come out in the Q&A, which should be tomorrow, actually. Um, also have a live on war day I'm recording at the moment too so got some fun stuff coming out this weekend but anyway uh, back to the attack drops on the queen walk uh, she just starts making her way around then comes in with the Valks up top 
and just kind of lets them go where they want. I think he figured that they would naturally uh, kind of move around the base like they would in a uh, Golem Avalanche attack because of all the dead space in the middle. And that pretty much held true. A few Valks did break their way into the core, but for the most part, they're going to just kind of go around in that little circular motion, uh, which is just how you want them to do it on a Golem Avalanche, but the same principle. And because he doesn't bring any jumps, he's able to bring just four heals, Keep those Valks moving. The Queen going around the other side. Her healers are getting shot down, but not a huge deal. Still has one heal left in the bag. Valks both inside and outside the base. Great placement on that last heal. All the Valks will get the benefit of it as everything converges on these last few defenses. Go ahead and go times two. Uh, but nice attack the Civil Serpent. Getting the three star and doing it with kind of a surgical Valk attack. Uh, or uh, Valk Avalanche, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But uh, nice job. Okay, we're going to take a look at a few uh, lower level-ish Town Hall 9s, starting with uh, Air, who's uh, bringing an Air attack, and uh, some Dragons specifically. So this is something that used to be so popular back uh, when people started realizing uh, that... Well, actually, when did it start? It started back when you could bring, I think, the extra uh, spell in the CC, that opened some stuff up for the Zap Quake. And uh, just when people started, you know, being able to utilize these Queen Walks a little bit better and entering the Queen into the base for a Queen Charge to get two air defenses. Because this base lends itself to this attack pretty well. It has those two air defenses uh, right next to each other. Or not really next to each other, but both can be accessed by the same Queen Walk. So she comes in here. Does have to deal with the King, unfortunately, but he gets poisoned along with the rest of the CC troops. Drops down the Rage and she's going to be fine. Uh, comes in with the king and the golem. Maybe didn't need the golem. That might have been a little bit too much because uh, the air defense was pretty accessible. And right here, the king is going to be landlocked on the wall anyway, along with the golem. So maybe, probably could have got away with maybe a few giants and the king. So you don't want to uh, invest too much, especially if you don't have a jump to let them go anywhere. Because the king goes down before he gets anything else, uh, but does get through that wall. Here come the dragons, though. Pretty good placement there. Get to the queen first. She's a big threat. And then from there, they'll just make their way through the base, kind of going on this little runway that the kill squad has set up. Uh, the queen is going to go through the wall, but then she'll get to that Tesla farm and the wizard tower, so all great value there. Uh, the, the dragons are splitting up a little bit. Drops that one giant maybe a little bit early. Doesn't get much uh, tanking because the archer towers weren't in range of the dragons anyway. Uh, but the idea was there, and uh, you can see the queen's now made her way through. Still has one more rage and then a wizard for cleanup which he'll put down in just a moment as everything makes its way through. Go ahead and go times two because these dragons are so slow, but uses that rage to counter the air sweeper. A few black uh, bombs go off, which take out the dragons, but the queen is there, uh, fortunately, and along with a few other dragons. This guy had some troll Teslas, it looks like, or at least maybe one. A lot of these bases did, if you noticed, maybe some of the last attacks, that, yeah, there was uh, some troll Teslas, but uh, it's, you know, something people do and it works Works well a lot of the time. So anyway, uh, good attack to air. We're going to take a look at two more, uh, 29 and 30. We have Freestyler and uh, coming in with a bit of a lower level uh, hero attack. And one thing I want you guys to notice is that I don't think the Queen Walk was necessary right here. You'll see that, I mean, I'm not saying level 15 Queen is too low. Uh, you can do you can do queen walks with level 15. You can probably even do anything above 10, really. But when you, if you look at this, he's using three healers, just kind of drops her down. Uh, she gets uh, two defenses in the CC troops, I think, uh, which is that ends up being that golem. But uh, from there, she doesn't really get anything else. Obviously, the healers will stick around for a little bit longer, but uh, probably could have just dropped down a golem or in, just entered the base and taken out those defenses with wizards. Or, you know, lure the stuff out and then go from there. So maybe not the best value. But one thing that was awesome is how the wall breakers uh, were dropped. That CC right there with the wall breakers. Uh, pretty gutsy, but drops drops down the CC and the wall breakers go straight to that little wall he wanted uh, because the compartment was cleared out. So in that sense, he did get some good value from the queen there. Uh, yeah, she works on that golem up top. She's kind of out of the attack, but uh, no big deal. Hogs coming in. Had the jump to get to the queen, pops the king's ability. Queen's down, the Valk's still doing tanking and still making their way through the base. Uh, just kind of surrounding the base with hogs. Has one more heal yet to deploy. 
uh, probably doesn't even need it as the queen converges up there. So uh, she actually ends up going it pretty nicely and uh, meeting up with the hogs. So it worked out uh, okay there. That guy had another troll Tesla and I think a giant bomb at the bottom too. So uh, fortunately he recognized it and did the smart thing, which is drop, I think, a few troops to try to trigger any traps, which ended up being the giant bomb. That way the hogs won't explode. He could have to help out his hogs, drop like three hogs there and just finished off the base. Uh, but he kind of waited for a while, so his hogs are going to run all, all the way to the bottom, which does make cleanup take a little bit longer, but this base is done anyway. Uh, it's already over. Awesome attack to Freestyler. Getting the three star. One more attack. Uh, number 30 uh, down here. We're looking at Riff, and he's coming in with just a classic uh, Go La Loon attack. Pretty low level base, but then again, his heroes are 15 15 which is, I would say, low level, at least in my opinion. Some people would say that's kind of mid to low level, but anyway, it's not the 30-30 that so many people in one hive have. So anyway, uh, comes in with the golem, and okay, people always say, you know, too many wizards, it's kind of a sloppy thing to do. I actually like when you bring a lot of wizards, especially when you have low level heroes, you're getting so much value for those wizards, because you have the king, you have the golem, and the golemites that become of it, you already have that out tanking, so the extra four troop space brings a lot of damage to the table. It's pretty much bringing an extra archer queen. Uh, obviously not that effective in how it shoots, but uh, it does the damage, and if they stay behind the golem, they can really help out the attack. Now, a few of them do go up top, but uh, they still were doing pretty solid work, and I think it was definitely worth it. So, um, especially if you have those low-level heroes, and you don't have any Valks or anything, bring that few wizards because uh, the damage is worth it, and sometimes you need more than just your heroes uh, to back up the golems or whatever is tanking. So anyway, comes in with the air attack. Just got one air defense in the queen, but that's all he needed. And uh, the balloons do get a little bit weird there if you go down, just because there's a heavy air defended area with all the Teslas and the balloons. But this last group will converge right there along with the queen, and they'll take that out. It still has one lava hound up that didn't pop. I think the air defenses aren't maxed, which helped out because uh, his Lava Hounds are level 2, which take a while for a Town Hall 8 level air defense to take out. So uh, uh, Lava Hound is still up, the balloons finish it off, and now it's just clean up as everything makes its way around. Getting the last few buildings, awesome attack to Rift, nice job. That's going to do it for this War Recap, hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, like I said, last chance to drop questions for the q and I've already gotten quite a few that I'm going to use, but that's still open to add a few more if I see some good ones in the comments, so one reminder for that. And uh, yeah, I'm recording a live on War Day. Right now, we're in a nice arranged war, like I said earlier in this video, so stay tuned for that. Should be a fun weekend. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this one, though. I'll see you guys later. Bye, Sectatron out.